are these people? Um, this happened. Andy Netanyahu got called illegal. Him existing. Okay, illegal. it wasn't you, bro. Um, <laughs> but well, yes. Uh, so I th- I feel like a lot of people still miss this, even though normally people don't miss these kind of things. But you know, figured I'd I'd bring it up. But the ICJ. International Court of Justice, a.k.a. The Hague, tells Israel that in occupation of Palestine, territories, and guess what? Pay him reparations. So. Reparations! Funny how that works. Um, Michel Mushabek. Huh. Have not heard of you before. Interesting name. Um, you know, you're over there at Sheer Post Michel. holding it down. M- Michel. Um, That's right. In a, In a landmark opinion issued today, the ICJ has said that Israel's 57-year occupation of the West Bank, East Jerusalem, and the Gaza Strip is in breach of international law, like we've been trying to tell people. The proceedings came out of a UN resolution passed in December of 2022. In the resolution, the UN General Assembly requested an advisory opinion from the ICJ on Israel's practices affecting the human rights of the Palestinian people in the occupied Palestinian territory, including East Jerusalem. The ICJ, also known as the World Court, also known as the Hague, is the UN principal judicial organ that educates disputes between member states and provides adversary opinions on international legal matters. Advisory, not adversary, but few of them tend to be this is this is the strongest this is the strongest statement they've literally made against israel in history ever so yeah it's it's a big deal and it came through i remember i think it came through like at four in the morning because it came through like because it came from europe yeah and i, I read this before i went to bed and i was just like wow first of all israel's gonna fucking melt down when they hear this and sure enough that happens and that's that's earth shattering. That's and it should be. I mean, goddamn, man, what's it gonna fucking take? Yep. Go, so, go ahead. This case is separate from the one brought forth by South Af- South Africa last year, in which the ICJ provisionally ruled that Israeli practices in Gaza are possible are plausibly genocidal. Plausible. Um. Following that ruling, Israel indicated that it rejects the ICJ's findings. Of course, in a post on Twitter, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu wrote, Nobody will stop us, not the Hague, not the axis of evil, and not anybody else. And the best part of this plan is no one can stop me. Essentially. Um, (laughs) uh, We need need to talk to evil. Because that's literally like... Thank you. Uh, uh, public hearing on Israel's occupation of Palestine were held at The Hague on February 19th and lasted for six days, during which 52 countries participated and presented arguments. The panel of 15 judges on the court were asked by the UN General Assembly to consider the legal consequences arising from the ongoing violation by Israel of the right of the Palestinian people to self-determination its prolonged occupation, settlement, and annexation of their territory occupied since 1967. And a bit before that, too. Um, the hearings commenced with remarks by Palestinian former minister Riyad al-Maliki, in which he asserted the rights of Palestinians to live in freedom and dignity in their ancestral land. He asked the ICJ to recognize the Palestinian people's right to self-determination and called on the court to declare Israel occupation is illegal must end it completely and unconditionally. Israel did not participate in the oral arguments, but the office of the Prime Minister issued a statement saying, Israel does not recognize the legitimacy of the discussion at the ICJ in The Hague regarding the legality of the occupation, a move designed to harm Israel's right to defend itself against existential threats. Yeah, but they're just fine with it happening for... Or it's an ICJ ruling potentially against Russia, but just not against them. It's it's only mm. it only applies to to you know non Western friendly countries, right? Oh, so in a public sitting at the Peace Palace in the Hague, Judge Nafal Salam 
uh, Nawaf Salam, sorry, president of the World Court, read the ICJ's advisory opinion regarding Israel's occupation of Palestinian territory. The panel of judges concluded by 14 votes to 1, ICJ has jurisdiction to get the advisory opinion requested by the UN General Assembly. So that's jurisdiction is always important. With these. So by 11 votes to 4, the court is of the opinion that the state of Israel continued presence in the occupied Palestinian territory is unlawful and that Israel is under an obligation to bring an end to its unlawful presence in the occupied Palestinian territory as rapidly as possible. With one single no, no vote by guess who? Judge du Julia Sebutende of Uganda. Julia. Remaining, Julia. Um, remaining 14 judges on the panel agreed Israel's settlement policies are in breach of international law state of Israel is under an obligation to cease immediately all new settlement activity and to evacuate all settlers from the occupied Palestinian territory. Also, while 14 votes to 1, the court agreed that Israel has the obligation to make reparation for the damage caused to all the natural and or legal persons concerned in the occupied Palestinian territory. By 12 votes to 3, the ICJ is of the opinion that all states are under an obligation not to recognize as legal the situation arising from the unlawful presence of the state of Israel in the occupied Palestinian territory and not to render aid or assistance in maintaining the situation created by the continued presence of the state of Israel in the occupied territory. That international yeah, organizations, including the UN, are under an obligation not to recognize as legal the situation arising from the unlawful presence of Israel in the occupied Palestine territory. Everyone that else, kick them the fuck out. Yep. <laughs> that the UN, and especially the General Assembly, which requested this opinion, and the Security Council should consider the precise modalities and further action required to bring an end, rapidly as possible, the unlawful presence of Israel in the occupied Palestinian territory. BDS, BDS, what? So, here's here's them giving that exact order. I figured people should hear it. Um, the it's court. a bit important. One, unanimously. Let me make it full screen for people. Find that it has jurisdiction to give the advisory opinion requested. Two, by 14 votes to one, decides to comply with the request for advisory opinion. By 11 votes to 4, is of the opinion that the State of Israel's continued presence in the occupied territory is unlawful. I mean, I think that's Who are a the big four? fucking statement. Who were the four that didn't? U.S., U.S., yeah. U.K., Israel, Australia would be my guess. Uganda. That Julia usually oh. is one of them. So, not sure what Israel has on Uganda, but something on that lady. Oh, maybe Israel doesn't have a vote. By 11 votes to 4, is of the opinion that the State of Israel is under an obligation to bring an end, to, sorry, to bring to an end its unlawful presence in the occupied Palestinian territory as rapidly as possible. So, hurry up. What does that mean exactly? Get out. As rapidly as possible. Yeah. Well, Bibi would say, the well, it's not very popular. It wasn't to be rebel. Well, we're, we're going as fast as we can. <laughs> you know? Uh huh. They're, yes, they're, they're killing as many people as they possibly can and arresting as many as they can and destroying the soccer fields and all the hospitals and all the infrastructure as fast as they can, folks. So, uh. today's highly significant opinion by the ICJ will have far reaching effects, I hope. Despite the fact that it is considered as advisory and non-binding, Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu was quick to blast the opinion, releasing a July 19th statement saying, The Jewish people are not occupiers in their own land, not in our own internal capital Jerusalem, nor in our sensual heritage of Judea and Samaria, a reference to the occupied oh, West Bank, and adding, No decision... What? Yep. No decision of lies in the Hague will distort this historic truth and similarly the legality of Israeli settlements in all parts of our homeland cannot be disputed. 
sounds like it got disputed, bro. I mean, I'm just just saying. Um, by the Hague, um, Israel's politicians' eagerness to assure their public and the world that the world sports decision will be ignored comes as no surprise, given how they reacted in May to the ICJ when it ordered an end to Israeli's military offensive on Rafah as part of the broader genocide case. The ICJ's orders relating to Israel's Rafa offensive required Israel, in conformity with its obligations under the Genocide Convention, to immediately halt its military offensive and any other action in the Rafa governorate, which may inflict on the Palestinian group in Gaza conditions of life that could bring about its physical destruction in whole or in part. God, I hate legally. You know? Um, the court oh, was also... It. Do to you <laughs> where it's like every word is just the worst one to pick. Um, the court also ordered Israel to open the Rafa crossing and allow aid trucks of food. And they water, said, "Fuck you." Yep, and medical supplies to reach displaced Palestinians. It also required that Israel provide access for investigators and report back on its progress within a month. But as we yeah, you know seen, what they did yesterday? They yeah. fucking bulldozed the Rafa gate. Yep. What what a fucking shit show. Um, but as we have seen, Israel complied with none of the above. Instead, it went ahead with its military offensive on Rafah and has further intensified its assault on Gaza City and northern Gaza. According to the Palestinian Ministry of Health, Israel killed 309 Palestinians, wounded 640. All these numbers are low, I'm sure. Gaza since July 11th, raising the death toll to 38,000. Which didn't we just hear? It was like six hundred thousand or something. Well, it was. It, they said one hundred eighty-six thousand, if you count the number of injured, un, you know, the people under rubble, et cetera. And it could be as mm -hmm. high as six hundred. But they, there's no hospital records to even know yep. anything. There's no anything. There's no infrastructure. It's all guesswork at this point, and that's what Israel wants. All right, that's why they did what they did. That's why they wiped out all of the infrastructure. That's why they wiped out all the hospitals and all the records and then blew up all the universities and all the books and burned the fucking houses down. Jesus. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm in, the name, in the name of Judaism. In the name of fucking Judaism. Uh. <laughs> so today's damning ICJ opinion is in line with but two-thirds of all UN member states agree on. As of June 2024, the state of Palestine is recognized as a sovereign state by 146 of the 193 member states of the UN, or over 75% of all UN member states. Spain, Ireland, Norway, and Slovenia was recently recognized as the state of Palestine. By going to the ICJ, the internationally recognized state of Palestine is calling upon all countries of the world to genuinely support democracy and equal rights for Palestinians to achieve a peace that would be in the best interest of Palestinians and Israelis alike. In anticipation of the ICJ opinion, the Israeli parliament passed a resolution on July 18th. The day before the ICJ announced its advisory opinion, affirming its opposition to Palestinian statehood, the resolution of which course. was proposed only by nine Arab members of the Israeli Knesset states that the establishment of a Palestinian state in the heart of the land of Israel would constitute an existential threat to the state of Israel and its citizens, perpetuate the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, and destabilize the region. Well, then That's you might as well point. just get the fuck out and give them the whole thing. Sounds about right to me. Like you should. As you should. In a Haaretz article on July 18th, far-right finance minister Bazal Smotrich of the Religious Zionist Bezazel. Party Bialzebub Smotrich of the Religious Zionist Party yep. was quoted as saying in Absolutely. A post on Twitter with a decisive majority of 68 to 9. 69. The Knesset voted against the establishment of an Arab terror state in Israel, not now, not in the future, not unilaterally, and not within an agreement. Referring to the annexation of the West Bank, he added, awakening of our overwhelming majority in Israeli society is amazing. Now is the time for sovereignty. 
<sighs> Occupation, ethnic cleansing, and genocide now. That's a hell of a slogan, huh? Pretty much. That's basically um, what he's saying. Occupation, <laughs> ethnic cleansing, and genocide now. You yeah, what? Nope. How, how is he not? How is he not? And he's become like this. Now, what happened was, if you that what had happened was he resigned from the war cabinet, okay? Because mm. he didn't think that that fucking Netanyahu was warmongering hard enough, fuck right? And hope. he's got, and he's got, yeah, fuck that hope. And he's got the support <laughs> of most of the Knesset, most of the. The citizenship, the the Israeli and uh, the Jewish citizenship of, of, uh, of that area. I don't even want to call it what it is, but what they still have no plan. What do you do with the people who are there? They still, they, mm -hmm. ah, ah, they, well, they you, don't want to give you an answer because you don't want to hear their answer. Well, there is an option they also seem to be good at, but you know. Secret talk. Um, they dug. Know. They dug them. They would know. <laughs> Took a couple of them, haven't they? Um, mm. while the Biden administration continues its insincere rhetorical support for the two-state solution, as well as the new cop Mullah administration, the U.S. has remained Israel's staunchest supporter, always using its veto power to shield it from accountability to prevent Palestinian statehood despite Israel's repeated violation of international law and UN Security Council resolutions, but yet, I quote, it's heartbreaking. So, the Palestinian people mm -hmm. have faced a long history of injustice, from colonialism to displacement, present-day apartheid, the countries of the Global South recognize that the unimaginable suffering being inflicted every minute, every day, of every second, on the Palestinian people come to an end. Time will tell that the ICJ's opinion will produce a change in the policies of Western governments and succeed in finally allowing Palestinians to return their homes and live their lives with freedom, equality, and dignity. Fortunately, I don't think it will do that. Free Palestine. That's, that's just me. Um, but what could, what, what could do some of it, this right here, which you sent me, um again broke at four in the morning as before i went to bed because i'm a lunatic who goes to bed at four in the morning yes folks sorry no but that's the truth <laughs> i do this all day every day uh, no, i basically China. can't stay awake anymore has quietly been working on the impossible uniting all the palestinian factions including hamas and fatah you didn't even know there was there was more than one um, the Beijing Declaration is the most hopeful event for Palestine in decades. Gaza will be rebuilt and then united with West Bank and Al Quds. Al, Al Quds? Quds? Al Quds? Al Quds. Al Quds. Al Quds. Al Quds. No kids. Al Quds um, is East Jerusalem. <laughs> it's 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 the part that that hooks up to the to the the, the mosque. You know the the Al the Al Aqsa I Mosque and the Golden Dome and vaguely recognize the name of the rock. Um, I mainly uh, know it as like Quid's News Network, but um, so well, that's like the official like Hamas Palestinian like you know video. Yeah. They, that's what Israel calls the propaganda network because it actually puts out the stuff that's happening mm. there. Look at the gaslight. So mm -hmm. all the fourteen factions: Hamas, Fatah, the Palestinian Islamic Jihad, the Popular Front for the Liberation of Palestine, and others have agreed to unify. Reconciliation is a watershed moment. Pays the road to an independent Palestinian state. Uh, I hope so. So here it is. China says Hamas and Fatah signed Beijing Declaration. Right? They hosted leaders from two Palestinian factions, hopefully to bridge some divides. Right? So in a rare show of unity, fourteen Palestinian groups, including Hamas and Fatah, agreed on Monday in the Chinese capital of Beijing. To achieve a comprehensive national unity under the umbrella of the PLO, the announcement was made in a joint statement at the conclusion of a two-day meeting in Beijing, following China's invitation to intra-Palestinian talks. So nice to hear That's, some of that. Well, unity. Uh, I I can't believe the Palestinians didn't invite the U.S. to to the to negotiations. Nah. Yep. 
Israel? No, they didn't invite Israel. Interesting huh. how that works. How about that? Um. Well, anything you have to say before we head out of here? Yeah, that's um, embarrassing as shit. Let me tell you for for the U.S. that that the China is peace brokering amongst the Palestinian people. That's China. great. Um, they've got to get there. You know, look, they they all need to get on the same page so they can fight the fight that they need to fight. I mean, they're being systematically wiped out, and it 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 feels like the Matrix in a way. You know, you got you got factions and all kinds of of groups that are. A, you know, some people would say that the left should listen and should should pay attention because you're being systematically decimated and, and dismantled piece by piece by a much larger, much more powerful, much better funded organization. Where have we seen that before? And yep. it's a good thing. Now, luckily, they've got someone like China who is trying to foster peace, that is China. trying to bring, a, you know, a world that we all want to potentially live in together mm. and and bricks and you know it it it's really scares the crap out of the people here that have held their hands on the global power network that has been dictating the way the world has gone for the last 75 years and this is going to be a red century like it or not look they have 1.7 billion people in their population which is six times the united states we you know our time is is limited up and we're grasping at straws and trying to start wars in order to stay relevant and keep the military industrial financial machine rolling while plunging everyone into debt while bullying the rest of the world while ignoring the hypocrisy that's going on right under our noses, okay, that we're pushing for at the, at the same time while screaming about peace and everybody getting in line and medical stuff and just, wow, it's it's exhausting. And and I get why everybody is, is burned out. And then you got the shit they pulled all week. You got, you got a warmonger addressing Congress. You had Sleepy Joe dropping out. You got them just anointing Cam Cam as their candidate. And that's a whole other thing. I don't believe that she's going to be the one that ends up in November. I think this whole thing is going to the convention. And that's going to be my little my little prediction is that they're all getting behind her. Of all in which you live and what came before you. They're throwing her to the wolves, okay? And they're going to basically make her either fall on the sword or completely ride it down and get stomped by, curb stomped by Trump in November and then blame her for not leaving, knowing that she couldn't win in the first place. Um, my guess is that she's going to end up uh, bowing out before the convention, but it may be after the convention, just like they waited until after the primary so they could anoint who they wanted as their quote unquote candidate. They may end up doing that again after the convention, believe it or not. I don't think we're done, guys. I really don't. I can't imagine they're going to November with this clown show. No way. They know she can't win one state. One state? I mean, I feel like she could get. She could win the state of depression, maybe. <laughs> well, well. She could win the state of uh, uh, Micronesia. No, they don't have a vote anymore. No, it's um, American Samoa. She can win American Samoa. Hmm. I mean, maybe I feel like although I feel although like, although the Samoans are WWE fans and we know Trump has the WWE vote like locked down I mean they might be Montel right. fans you don't know I mean I just feel like Ooh. objection speculation but I am you know um, and I'm spent <laughs> <laughs> on that one and, and you're done um, alright well Talking to, talking about this stuff is, of course, why we're demonetized. If you want to get around that system, you can go to codashv.com slash indie news network and the QR code on your screen or look for the links in the doobly-doo below. Um, you can't do that because, you know, times are hard and you need that money for more important things. Hit the like and subscribe button. They're right down there. They're right below there. They look like, like one of these. It looks like subscribe. 
very easy to find. You know, hit that share button. Leave a comment. Let us know what you think. You know, do you think Indy's going to be right? You, 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 what do you think? Um, otherwise, don't get distracted by the nonsense. It doesn't matter because nothing's going to fundamentally change no matter who shows up anyway. It's all a fucking clown show and a joke. Just laugh. Just laugh, yep. folks. Yep. Um, nice.